Well, ultimately it's gonna be fast. That's the goal anyway. This is one of those that sound great fast. Um, yeah, the second half, I'm still trying to decide if I'm going to do triads or if I'm actually gonna have us play individual notes. I think the triads make the most sense. So I think that's what we're going to do, but because uh, we worked on triads, remember, and and this is an example, this is an opportunity to do that. So I'm going to kind of let people join up here. We don't have, we got three people on, so I don't know what's going on, but I don't have any moderators yet. <clears throat> I'm going to add a little repeat signs in here because we're going to double everything. Hey, Bruce, finally got a moderator. Let's see. Here we go. So the way I do a repeat sign in typewriter tab or typewriter notation is double line here and then a colon like that. And then do it here, do a colon and another line. And then we're going to do that here where it's tiny. Hard to see it. Let's see that and this and then here that and this um, so hey William what's going on good to see you. hey Lena Holly's here good morning shirt again sweatshirt it was cold when I got up this morning so I threw it on like it was almost 60 degrees <laughs> mm. I don't know what is it? it it was cold when I went on my walk and then I was walking in the sun and because I'm wearing a black sweatshirt dark blue sweatshirt I got all like it got all warm I'm like oh man I'm drinking hot coffee it's 63 right now it's going to be windy again tomorrow. Man, the wind has just been kicking butt to get a new roof on the back. Just the back half. Less than 180, I know, right? That's almost half a year. That's like a school year. School year would be 180 days, generally. I don't know. Does everybody have a capo? If not, I mean, I can play this in G. I wrote it in G, but... but Every time I, everybody I see play it, plays it in um, A, capo second. How many people do we have? We actually get, hey, Brian, what's going on? Brian Harkins. Uh, David Sillers. Leslie, where's Leslie? Who's Leslie? Is my cousin on? My cousin Leslie is a flight attendant for a private jet company, which is pretty cool. She goes all over the place and meets some pretty crazy people. Uh, literally crazy and literally famous stuff. Uh, let's see what. Um, okay, so yeah, we, we got 19. We don't have many people. We're still going to wait a little bit to start the lesson. Um, Paul Myers in the house. I see Dan. Dan, I see you there. I think David Sillers meant Holly. Oh, Joseph Finley, good morning. Yeah, so uh, we, if we can get a capo going at the third fret or second fret, that would be great. If not, uh, that's fine. Um, if nobody has a capo, then I guess we can go just to standard G. But basically, I and against my because we're working with tab, I go ahead and do the key um, as if we're in open position. Okay, 
Um, I, I disregard the capo. If it was just music notation, I would put this in the key of A. All right? But because we're dealing with tab, if I were to do that, it would look really funny. Like if it, this note was said two and these, these notes said six and five, you'd be like, wait, what? And you'd have to go every two is a zero. And you know, so there's, you don't need to do any calculations here. You just put the capo on and play. Um, so, but like I said, before we get going, before we get, before I get deep into this. Oh, William, you're new here. Well, good to see you. I'm glad. Um, Bruce will hook you up with the, I'm here every month. Most every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 9 a.m. California time, and I tend to go a couple hours. <laughs> uh, but there's probably maybe maybe an hour of teaching happening in that two-hour period. Most of it just me talking about me, you know, my favorite subject, and uh, and then uh, and then I just want to know what you think about me. So that's my second favorite subject. What do you think about me? <laughs> So, to, to, to paraphrase Bette Midler. Mm. We also have a drinking game. If Gary's in the house, he might put up the rules. We have 15 or 16 rules now with a drinking game. If I touch my face, uh, we take a sip. Um, if I say I had abandoned high school called and then fill in the blank. If I say, if I drop a pick, that's a sip. If I change guitars, that's a sip. If I drop a thumb pick, that's two sips. Uh, it's funny because yesterday um, the, the uh, G7 people reached out to me on Instagram and said, hey, do you use a thumb pick? And I said, well, sometimes right now I'm struggling. I got, you can see, I don't know if you can see how shiny my thumbnail is. I've got some polish on there. I'm trying to get my nails not to break. I'm so tired of it. I love, have, I love having nails for, and I don't even need to have long nails. I just need to have some nails for, for pop stuff because I can really... to get that snap with the pop things and um i'm not able to do that with just just the flesh so i polished them with this hardening polish hoping hoping that usually what happens when i do that i just get a bunch of hang nails <laughs> it just hardens the cuticle and doesn't doesn't harden the nail so much i still break nails um so i just have no thumbnail right now it's so frustrating so but they reached out to me and asked me if i wanted there's a company in canada that makes uh, apparently really good thumb picks so they're going to send me some. So that's cool. No, no pressure at all. I don't have to do an endorsement. Although if I like the product, you know, I'll talk about it here. And I do, I do like this capo. I felt bad because they're texting me and I, I, I almost said, Hey, you should, I talked about capos on Monday. And then I went, Oh wait, no, I said, this, this one's really expensive. So it was like, yeah, I didn't direct them to the video. I mean, they may be watching. I don't know. Um, but I really do like these capos. And if you can afford to get one, I mean, I, like I said, I think they're about 45 bucks, but they're really cool. I mean, you just throw it on and you just, clamp it you know you just squeeze it and it, it's good um so the, so the g7th capos are great uh, they gave me this one i bought i bought a couple before i bought the 12 string one because or no they gave me that one i think they gave me that one also at the nam show remember they also gave me one because when i was standing there talking to him my wife goes look it's rick beato and i went oh crap i gotta go i gotta go talk to him and they said take him a capo <laughs> and i i took him a capo and said they wanted me to give this to you, and and Be Beato said, "Really? Oh, that's nice, awesome, cool. Thank you so much." And I said, "Well, don't thank me, thank them." And uh, it was pretty cool. So we, Be Beato and I talked a little bit, bit about uh, Oud. I've been playing Oud a lot lately, and about his son. And um, I don't even think I told him I had a YouTube channel, but he's, he, you know, his was still in the process of blowing up. He's a million now. I'm gonna hit. I'm gonna hit a hundred. I'm never gonna hit a million. Um, uh, but, uh, but not at this rate anyway, who knows? Yeah, it's 5 p.m. UK time. Orville, what's, Orville, what's going on? Good to see you. <laughs> Uh-oh. Oh, drop G, C, so just, C, or C, G, just all G, C's and G's. Hello from Loop. Yeah, I almost wish everybody would say hello and then where they're from every, you know. I know most people, I forget though, like I forget where Hook is from. Bruce is in Florida. Holly's in California like me. 
Hook, I think, wait, and the other thing, Hook is in Bakersfield, is that right? John's in Louisville. Gary's in uh, Wisconsin. I think we have another Wisconsin person. Sam is in Michigan. Sorry, I know I'm, I'm just chit-chatting here. I'm trying to get, wait till more people get going so we can... Um, let's see, who else do we have? Well, Dennis is in Holland, or the ne Netherlands. Paul's in Chicago. William, I don't know where you are. <laughs> uh, Joseph, I don't know where Joseph's from. Bob Schumann, dang it. I knew it, but I don't remember. Brian Hawkins, I don't know. Uh, Dan is in California also. Dan, uh, Dan O. Dan O. Lena is in Nevada, I believe. I mean, that's pretty good. Ed, I, Ed, where is Ed from? Dang it. Yeah, I agree. I mean, if you watch uh, um, Beato's live stream, uh, it just goes by too fast. I, he has a moderator that will actually, and he has it set to slow, like mode, I think. Um, I'm curious. I'm curious if once I hit a hundred thousand and I get a check, because I think, like I said, Beato has a check next to his name. Um, if that check shows up in the comments. So if I make a comment on a live stream and they see someone with a check next to their name, they're going to actually answer that question. You know what I'm saying? Um, so I haven't, I haven't gone and seen um, RJ's live stream lately, but he's blown up. He's probably up to 200,000 subscribers now. Is that, uh, where, where's RJ at? Cause he, I was ahead of him and it made no sense. Cause he did, he was doing really good. Lots of videos and lots of gear reviews and gear review videos really do well. And he, people send him stuff all the time. He's 124,000. Um, and so, yeah, he just does gear review after gear review after gear review. I'm just not interested in doing that. I don't know. And I don't really have an ear for that kind of stuff. Um, you know, <laughs> I mean, you're talking to a guy that uses $99 Squires on Justin Bieber records. Because <laughs> to me, it sounds great. Um, so Gary, yeah, Gary's in the. I get, I get, I get the, I get the what they call the button plaque. Yeah, it looks like a the the YouTube button in the silver one. So if you, uh, it's silver for a hundred thousand. I think it's gold for a million. And then I think the next one's ten million, maybe five million. It's a platinum, and there's not many people that have ten million. The funny thing is Bieber probably, because Bieber's channel has, how many does Bieber have? Um, he may, uh, he may have a hundred million, right? Justin Bieber, where is his, which one is it? That's, is that him? Or, he's got a music, is, is this a subject or? 61 million subscribers. But the funny thing is Justin probably got like the silver plaque and the gold plaque and the platinum plaque and all this. And they're just sitting in a closet somewhere. <laughs> he's kind of, you know, he's kind of like me. He doesn't really care about that kind of stuff too much. I mean, I think he would love to get a Grammy. He really wanted to get a Grammy this year for um, best R&B record. Um, I guess I got nominated for the, because it got nominated, the Chase, Changes got nominated for a couple records and I'm listed as a, producer on it, so technically I guess I'm a uh, Grammy-nominated guitar player, producer, or whatever, but um, I don't care about that kind of stuff. Oh, I get I get check for money. Yeah, they pay me every month. Google pays me every, every month. So, for the ad, the ad revenue, so, you know, those ads help out. They add, hey, good karma, what's going on? Good morning. And, and good morning, Gary. I didn't know if I officially said good morning. Oh, Fra Fra uh, Francis. Greetings from Ireland. All right. You got a Scottish brother there. Um, yeah. Oh, Pucks. Yeah. I know. Okay. Then is that where you are, William? Yeah, I know exactly. Pucks. Uh, Pucks. 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 Um, I lived in outside of Philadelphia for a while. Pucks. is closer to Pittsburgh, right? Or Harrisburg, maybe. But I was a kid. I lived like when I was. 10 and 11 or 9 and 10 I lived in Philly 
outside of Philly on Providence Road. So if you're from Philadelphia, you probably know where Providence Road is. Okay. So I want to talk about um, the mechanics of this song, Jupil Cheatham. We, uh, we've done three, three non-original songs. Um, and let's see. Oh, okay. Yeah, we had... This is Wildwood Flower. Okay. We did that. And then we did Down in the Valley to Pray. Okay, now Wildwood Flower was purely in... And we did it pretty low because we did it in the key of G, kind of trying to stay in G shapes for now. Um, and I'm taking my capo off. Uh, but Okay. And it's kind of weird five bar phrase, but we stayed in open position. All right. I'll get rid of this big music. Sorry. Okay. So we stayed in open position. And so our first finger and technically first position our first finger was assigned the first fret, the second finger was assigned the second fret, third finger was assigned the third fret, so on and so forth. Then the next song we did was Down in the Valley to Pray. See, I should do a a, a thing like this for for uh, Wildwood Flower. I, I, I may change that. Uh, I like this look right here. Um, so, uh, and I could probably, because of the nature of this, I could probably go up like this and maybe make me a little bit bigger. Like that. Nah. Well, I could, yeah, because I can make this smaller too. It doesn't have to be as big as it is. I mean, I don't know. That looks okay. I, I like it better the other way though. I like, I'd rather be a little smaller. I know you'd rather see me as big as possible, but it's <laughs> okay. That This will do. All right. Um, so, but when we did um, Down in the Valley to Pray, we played in second position, but still mm -hmm. using open string. So we're still technically in open position, but every single note was either played on the second fret, the fourth fret, and then there, were, there was one note that was played on the third fret. So we could literally move our whole hand up so that we didn't have to just, because keep in mind, if we, were, we could do that Down in the Valley in first position, but we'd be using our second, third, and fourth finger the entire time. And those are the less dominant fingers. You, you're less confident with them. You can dig in. You get less meat on the strings and on the notes with those three fingers than if you use these three fingers. Okay? So it's part of it is because it's easier, but part of it is because you've got better, stronger, more confident fingers on the notes playing the melody. So you can really, you can do more. You just feel more confident doing stuff than if you're, like you, your first finger is doing absolutely nothing. Now, maybe... If you're struggling with keeping your pinky out, like if you keep tucking your pinky, then what I would suggest is go ahead and play down in the valley. Just practice it in first position so you're not using your first finger for anything. Um, and then, let's see. Pinky's getting a workout, and that would be more for as an exercise than a practical. You know, there's things you do to, to practice and exercises and to build strength and everything, and then there's the gig and where the where the rubber literally meets the road. Well, I guess that's not literal. Figuratively meets the road, <laughs> where the finger meets the string, um, and uh, that's that's where you really want to kind of play in your most solid, confident, you know, moment. Okay, so so we did first position for Wild with Flower, second position for Down the Valley. And then for Bill Cheatham, we're going to do both. In fact, we're going to actually go up the neck. We're going to go up to fifth position, I think, is how I'm going to do the B section. But I'm only doing the first half of Bill Cheatham right now. Okay? And the, and the way the song is generally played, because it's pretty fast, is it's A section, which is what this is, twice, and then the B section twice, and then back to the top. Um, and that's and when it gets to soloing, you would do that. So you got this...
differentiate and then you go back to the top. So that it, the B section rhythmically can be a little bit uh, difficult, mainly just because it's so fast and so redundant that, um, but there's a change in the middle. So that, that change in bar on the second half uh, that you can see right here, um, uh, where it goes G, C, D, G, and then it goes G, C, G, D. That's a little marker there. Part of that is, I think, just a little marker so that you go, oh, okay, now I know where I am. <laughs> because, you, you know, coming out of the A section, you're doing G, C, D, G. And then the B section starts and you go, G, G. same thing. Again. Yeah, new song title, not me, I'm Tom Straley. <laughs> I just didn't want you to think I was Bill Cheatham. <laughs> any new any newbies would be like, wait a minute, I thought this was Tom Straley's channel. <laughs> so. Uh yeah, I don't, I'm wondering, should I what uh should I change the Oh I can I or no? Um, okay, so we're going to go over the rhythm of this song. We're not going to play it that fast, so don't worry. Um, and then, but so, so like I was saying, Wildwood Flower, first position. Um, uh, Down in the Valley, second position. This one's going to do both. There's a lot of things in this one, particularly, just even in the A section, we're not even talking about the B section, where we're going to get into some triads, which is good, because I remember I told you I wanted to teach you some more triads, uh, not just on these three strings. But, so we're going to do triads on the top three strings, okay? We're going to go... I think... I think that's what we're going to do. There we go. Um, but I'm still kind of... Because then, then we're going to go back to open position. Um... I'm not sure how we do. So, okay, I'm going to throw my capo back on. Um, oh, am I getting questions here? <laughs> I ain't, it ain't me. I ain't Tom Straley, son. <laughs> Oh, I was just kind of doing the, the standard folk groove, I think, primarily. Uh, boom, like that. Okay. Uh, and I'll, yeah, we'll, uh, I'll, thanks for reminding me because I probably would have glossed right over that. Um, so, but um, but the B section, we're not going to get to today. We mean, we probably won't get to on Friday either. We're probably just going to woodshed. Maybe I'll, we'll get to the rhythm maybe to, on Friday of the B section. We'll practice that because that's a great exercise alone. That alone is going to... is gonna kick your butt. The other thing, the nice thing about having the capo at the first fret, it does make the strings a little lower, so it does make it a little bit easier to push down the chords. So if you're struggling with chords at all, uh, it'll be easier. Um, and uh, maybe quite a while before you can get the chord changes up to speed. I know Lena was saying, I think it was Lena was saying on Monday that she she wishes she could move her fingers that fast. And I was just playing rhythm, I think. So, um, but this, <laughs> basically what we're gonna do is the first two bars, of Bill Cheatham, we're going to be in second position. In the next two bars, we're going to be in first position. In the next two bars, we're going to be in second position. And then in the last two bars, we're going to be in first position again. So our hand is going to be here, then here, then here, then here. Okay, so when we're over the G chord, we're going to be here. And then we're going to go to C. And so there's lots to talk about here. Um, but for, that's the first thing you should notice, okay? We've got second position, then the first position, second position, first position. Okay. Um, you have... Uh, so the one of the issues is going to be transitions. How do you get from first position to second position? You can just move 
you know, I can be going like that, right? I could go D, I'm, and I'm pretending we're in the key of G, okay? Even though if you have perfect pitch, I apologize. Uh, but anyway, D, I'm sorry, E, F sharp, A, B, and I could go down to C, right? See, so I just moved from second position to first position. Fortunately, in this song, we don't ever have to do that. In this song, we always have an open string or, you know, one open note or two open notes um, either at the change or prior to the change that allows us to move. And we're going to practice those little sections. We may only practice three or four notes to be able to do that. The first example is bar, the last two beats of bar two. We have that F sharp with our third finger and open D. And see, there's our open string and there's where we move, okay? Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go first finger, okay? I mean, sorry, third finger, get the gardeners just showed up. Uh, third finger, open, uh, third finger on the F sharp and an open D, and that's where we move our hand. And then you're going to put your second finger on the E in the first note of uh, bar three, okay? So practice that. Hey, Mamba, what's going on? Oh, yeah, sorry. I think I even copied it. Let's see if this works. Okay, I just pinned the Discord link. Um, and that... Thanks, Joseph. Yeah, I'll try to do that. Um, so even though we're going to be going back and forth between second position and first position, we're going to have transitional moments that will allow us to do that without, you know, because because the goal is to get up to speed. I'm not sure. Now, here's the thing. The actual melody that I have on my piece, this old version of it that I found, uh, does not have that open D. I added that. I added that for that transition moment, but also I just like the flow of it better because originally it was written. And you could do that. Um, if you want to, if you print up this paper, if you want to put parentheses around that D, you're more than welcome to. Uh, but I kind of like for two reasons. One, I like, the, I like that melodically surrounding the note above, below, and then to the note. So D, or F sharp, D to E. Okay. Oh, the tab is wrong, isn't it? Dang it, I gotta fix that. I, it's easy fix, but dang it, I already, <laughs> I didn't see that. So those zeros, those open Bs, I mean, you could totally do it that way. But I'm, I'm actually playing the B up here, okay? Uh, let, me, uh, let me see if I can fix that quick. We, uh, somebody, somebody, uh, okay, you guys just practice. <laughs> Do a warm up. Okay, shoot. Uh, can't do that. I gotta have the right, right type of note. Yeah. And then here and here. All right. Save. Uh, print. Yeah. I mean, I'm pretty quick at this. Oh, I got a new video dropping today, by the way. So check it out.
Okay, I think it went through. Hold on a second. Yeah, there it is. Open. Come on. Oh, I didn't get to it in time. There it is. So I'm going to remove this out, and then I'm going to drop some of this. Boom! Pretty good, huh? <laughs> I'm pretty. I'm pretty fast. Now I probably did something else wrong that I'll discover here in a second, but there we go. Yeah, sip. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, take a sip. Deserved. Um, yeah, that's much better. Okay, sorry about that. I should have caught that before. I I did this. Was it? Did I do this this morning or last night? I can't remember now. I think I did this last night. So. Again, I, that you can stop on the F sharp if you want. The melody I have went, you know, and that's nice. And you've got it's a it's a half note, so you got a second, right? You got a, a little bit of a time, to, a little bit, a little bit of time to get to the C, the E note there. And you're basically just playing a C chord, so it's just like you're playing rhythm. So, um, so that one you've got, all right, then, um, so that one you've got a, an open string before the downbeat to allow you to set up going from second position to first position. Okay, the next transition when you're going back from first position, from first position to the second position, which is going from bar four to bar five, that one, the open string is on the downbeat. So you're going to stay in first position until the end of the bar, whereas this one, when we did on uh, bar two, when we hit that D, uh, the F sharp, and then the open D, technically we're moving, we're anticipating, okay? We're anticipating the position shift, and you're going to practice this, okay? See what I'm doing? I'm playing third finger, because because I'm in third position, th third finger, I'm playing third finger at the fourth fret because I'm in second position. Open string, and then I go down here. And I play second finger on the second fret because now I'm in first position. And those are the kind of little teeny tiny exercises you can create um, to to allow you to make those transitions um, quickly. Okay. Then we go to this phrase. I'm not worried about the phrase yet. We're not there yet. And we end the phrase on the third fret of the second string with our third finger. So we're still in first position, but the very next note is open D. So there's where we we move. At that moment, we move, and now we move up to the second position and play the little chord. And that's another one where it stopped here. The melody you can also, if you when you print this up, you can also put parentheses. And let me upload the new one. Okay, did somebody say that? Yeah, the tab is yeah. The, the tab is after the capo. Yeah, yeah. So don't, yeah, just pretend like you're in G with the capo on. Don't, don't even think about the capo position. If I were only writing music, John, if there was no tab, I would put this in the key of A because I was capo. Because I, I see this as the key of A. I see A, B, C sharp, D, E. I see this in the key of A. But if I'm dealing with tab and in this in this scenario, it's just better to think, okay, we're in the key of G. Um, everybody put their capo on second fret, so we're all in the key of A together. But that's basically it. Okay. Now, um, let me let me uh, pull out in Dropbox. I mean, I'm sorry, in um, Discord, I'm going to get rid of the this one here. Uh, I'm going to delete that. 
and I'm going to drop in a new one. Where is it? Here. It's here. Okay. Desktop. And move it to here. No. Oh, there it is. Okay. And then here, my stream stop. Trying to make it in the right, correct order. Oh, because if I move that screenshot, it's going to disappear. See, I got to be careful with that because it's, it's, you know what? I'm going to redo this one more time because watch this. If I take that screenshot that I took and I move it to here, it goes away. <laughs> so I'm going to put it where it's going to be ultimately. And then I'm going to drag the screenshot over. Because it, it's it's just using you know, a marker to know where to get it from. It's not actually copying it over. It's not. This is not an actual there, file. There we go. All right. Lesson, you're learning more than you thought you'd know. You're learning about OBS and <laughs> Finale software. I should have told you how I was changing the position of those cap the, the uh, notes and tab. That's something that took me forever to figure out. I was like, I know you can do this, but how? You know, I don't want this to be open string. You know, <laughs> I was like, dang it. And now I know I, it, you know, it's a good thing I, we're doing the tab stuff and I'm doing the Finale because it's like helping me remember all this stuff because I hadn't been doing it in a while. Oh, that's interesting, Joseph. Yeah, I'm going to have to check it out. Um, uh, let's see. Hey, Aslan, good to see you. All right. So, um, and so again, like I said, we've got this. You could, we could, we could do this. Hit the open B string. Hit the third fret. Okay, open B third fret, and then hit the D string, and then move your hand into second position. And you can grab this chord if you want. We haven't talked about that yet, but if you if you can make it, go for it. Uh, but so we got uh, again. This is a this is a thing where we can't anticipate the change. We have to do the change at the at the downbeat. And there's your exercise. Okay. And here's another one where we do the anticipation, or we don't have we don't have an anticipation. We have to make the change on the downbeat because we're we're we've got our first finger on the A note. And again, that note is an extra note that I added. So if you want, you can stop at the F sharp. Okay. So in other words, that Second line would be this. Okay. Um, but I kind of like that. I, again, I'm surrounding that melody note. So the G, this open G note that's in bar, that starts bar seven, I'm melodically surrounding it. I'm hitting the F sharp below it and I'm hitting the A above it. Sam, what's going on? Um, so, so again, um, and I, I could maybe even put brackets here saying second position, first position, second position, first position. Um, that might be helpful, and I, I might do that. I might put it in between um, the the music and the tab because I've got that space in there. I can do that. Um, so I might do that. Uh, might might not be a bad idea, um, but uh, that's the best way to play this. So we're in we're in two positions. We're in second position, first position. So Watch what position I'm in, I'm in and notice that it changes every two bars, okay? Uh, <laughs> uh, actually, we know that. 
I saw some people doing like a C7 chord. Which I thought was cool. Okay, so watch my left hand. Sure, the best way to play that. A million ways you could play that. I mean, at tempo, this thing is like. Uh, uh, what is it? Oh, I'm, I was doing it. I was doing it and a four. I mean, it can. It's pretty stinking fast. You, you can hear people play this thing, insane. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. It's it. it I, you know what? Uh, I could. I wonder. I could. I could make it a little bit bigger. Check this out. I can do two things to make it bigger. Let me do this. I gotta put like a, it's a two-handed process. Though. I don't need that where it says guitar and all that. That doesn't need to be on there. So I can just grab this and really make it. Pretty much as I, in fact, the bottom was kind of bugging me, so I'm gonna do it again here. Okay. Your wish is my command. So this will be a little bit better. Okay, so this is that one. I'm gonna delete that. Boom, watch, there it goes, went away. <laughs> I didn't have to. Now, so, so what I did was I kind of cut off the size I think that's that's a little bit bigger, okay? And I think I can I, I'm kind of cropping it in a little bit into my uh, video, but I don't think you need to see the, the bouts of my acoustic. I, I could make it even bigger. Is that better, David? For everyone, I, my eyes are awful too. Uh, they're getting worse all the time. Let's see. Okay, so there's a conversation going on. Do I need to be part of this? <laughs> What's AJ getting into here? Excuse me, pardon me, excuse me, sorry. Oh, hi, Holly, could you just move your purse over so I don't want to step on it while I take my seat? <laughs> yeah, that's pretty funny. Oh. That's awesome, Joseph. You got you got Wild Wood Flower down. That's great. I may be moving a little too fast too. We may sit on Bill Cheatham for a while because, boy, I'll tell you that that B section is going to be. It's going to be challenging to say the least. I like the A section. So okay, so let's uh, let's talk about let's talk about the rhythm though, um, and uh, let's just do a G chord. We're not going to worry about changing anything yet. So grab a G, make a G shape. Um, again, we're technically playing an A chord. So don't, if you got perfect pitch and I keep saying G and you're going, no, it's A, shut up. You know, that's just what's going on. So, all right. So, um, I, you know, I kind of like this G where I've got the B string open. I'm doing kind of a three finger old school G or you could do it this way, but if you want to do this way, there's basically, those are the, I would say there's probably four ways you could do G chord. Um, you could play it with one, two, three fingers. You could play the same one with, Three, two, three, four fingers, or you can play a four finger one where you got the uh, so here we go, like that, where you got the top two strings being played with these third, fourth, or the other thing you could do that. Well, actually, there's probably more ways, but um, basically, you could, don't need the first finger down here on the B, you can deaden that A string, especially if you got a B right here. Uh, because it's a little muddy to have that 
and, and again, I know I'm an A, but we're going to talk B. We're going to say the G. G, B, D, right there, that triad there at the bottom. Blah, 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 blah. You know, it's kind of, you wouldn't play that triad on piano. Um, so to skip that B, you know, to deaden that A string, skip that B note, go right to the D. And if you play the G chord like this, there's no third there. You've got a G, a dead note, a D, a G, a D, a G, a D, a G, a D, a G. No, no, no A, no B's in there. So if you open up that B string, you get you get that third in there, which makes makes it sound more majory to me and happier, and, and kind of to me in my ears almost a little more old school. Like if I'm playing if I'm playing guitar on a a movie or something like that, and the mood and it and the scene is. 1920, I'm probably going to play G chord like this or like this. I'm not going to play it like this. That to me sounds a little bit more modern. It sounds a little bit more, I don't know, 80s and on. Oh, uh, thanks, Richard. Richard's jumping in. Not seen Richard before. Thank you, Richard. John Forward, played G wet way. Oh, sorry, because I named like 400 ways. <laughs> so, this one? This one? This one? <laughs> So you can do, uh, you can type in the tab. So like if it was, does Fogarty play at 3x0003 like that? Or you can type in 320033. You know, you can type that in to, to give me the, it may, it may ask the, the comment have to, may have to be moderated. But um, actually my, I, Fogarty take, takes guitar lessons from the same, my teacher that I had back in the 80s. And that's Carl Verheyen. So, Richard makes his first comment and I ridicule him. It's really bad, bad YouTube management. <laughs> oh, two-fingered. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Richard. Yeah, it just makes sense in some ways. So that first one. Um, do we cheat them and how? That's a, uh, <laughs> that's an and how. <laughs> It's a um, law firm, right? Oh, interesting. I didn't realize that. that you're right. Is that from Three Stooges? I remember that. I remember something vaguely. I'm not a huge Three Stooges fan. Okay. So, um, so let's talk about the rhythm. The groove that I'm using um, is what I call the standard folk groove, and it is a syncopated groove, meaning that we have um, a... Um, stranded eighth note um and so i'm kind of hitting a bass note or i'm not trying to get specifically the bottom note i can hit a couple strings or whatever just the bottom of the guitar it's like in fact on the strums you can even kind of aim for the top few strings and not hit all of them you don't have to hit all of them you can you kind of brushy you know just kind of hit what strings you hit and that's all good it's all good <laughs> Take a drink, chill out, and just play guitar. <laughs> That's why I hate tab. When they tab out, and I've told you this before, when they tab out, like, it's like the worst is like Hendrix or Steve Ray Vaughan because they're flailing. They're just throwing their hands on a guitar. But some brilliant kid, you know, some brilliant tab, and I'm not, I mean brilliant. Um, I'm not being sarcastic there, but some someone really good at hearing all that stuff gets in there and goes, well, on the first strum he hits five strings and then on the upstroke he hits four strings but the next downstroke he only hits three strings it's like they hear all that and they notate all that and you're sitting there trying to go well i'm trying to play exactly how many no he wasn't there's no way steve ray vaughn was thinking about you know he was just he's just flailing on the guitar right he's abusing the guitar and it but someone comes along and analyzes what he do, does, and it makes it look far more complicated than it really was. Um, now, what, what's complicated is getting to that level of proficiency to have that energy and, and, and sell the music on stage as an artist and as a guitar player and all of that. That's, that's insane. And it's rare. But the actual playing of it is not particularly difficult, at, or certainly not as difficult as those tab books tend to make it look. And I've, I've bought a lot of tab books and I went, oh, especially when you got anything to do with chords. If it's single note stuff, it's like you can get a lot of value from the single note stuff out of tab books. But okay, so don't be too stressed about hitting all the strings. You know, I may 
maybe doing more of a, like a, a kind of rotating my hand so that I'm hitting top strings, low strings, high strings, low strings, high strings, low strings, like that. Depending on which stroke I'm doing, if a down stroke, then it's going to be more bassy strings. If it's an up stroke, it's going to be more treble strings. Okay. Yeah, but he also tuned down a half step, so the strings weren't weren't particular. You know, they were a little looser, and he but but yeah, he broke strings. I've seen him break. I saw him. He broke a strap that one time. Remember that? You see that video of him breaking a guitar strap? I've done that, and you're holding the guitar and you're playing. <laughs> I've, I've saved my guitar m multiple times. In fact, my main strat, I need, I need to, I've got uh, strap locks on it and it's come loose and I just know that the, the back and forth of the strap lock on the bolt is just eventually gonna break the bolt in half. I just know that, I know how that works. So, what year did I move out of Indiana? 1983. I graduated high school in 80, or 79, North Central. And then I moved out here. Um, I didn't go, I didn't finish Butler. I only went one year, uh, but I basically just worked um, doing music and saved money. To, to, so I had money to live on when I got here and I needed it. Cause boy, work was slow. What was the strap tuned to? <laughs> it was tuned down a half step too. Okay. Sorry. Okay, we gotta get the strumming group down. Um, now, the, again, when I talk about strumming groups, I, I always remind people that you know, like the old school metronomes, they go tick tock, tick tock, right? The the uh, pyramid shaped ones with a little boom, boom, boom. Okay, that's how you want to think of your arm or your wrist and your hand or your you know your whole arm. You know, it's you keep it going. Okay, the pattern we're gonna do is this. You can do a lot of different patterns. Now that's a four beat pattern. So this pattern works fine for uh, the first six bars of this song, but after that, you've only got two beats. So we're only gonna go. Uh, so we're gonna go one, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three. Bum, ba, da, bum, ba, da, bum, ba, da, bum, right? Um, so, the pad, the standard folk groove that I tend to use in bluegrass, uh, something like that. You might go boom, down, da, da, boom, down, da, da, okay, where it's one, two, and four, and one, two. Regardless, you want to keep your arm moving, okay? So here's the standard folk groove slowed down. How I want you to play it. is paying a visit. <laughs> one, two, and, and four, and one, two, and, and four. Hey, Nicholas. And, and four, and one, two, and, and four, and. Okay, that's the pattern. If you only moved your arm when you needed to, it would look like this. One. And it's really hard to keep time when you're moving your arm only when you have to. When you're not thinking of your arm as a metronome, um, you're in the only movement like this when you have to make contact with the strings. Um, if you look like Elvis Presley in the, uh, I touched my face so we can all take a sip. You'll look like Elvis Presley in the movies, you know, or some stiff person that doesn't know how to play guitar. Um, and it'll feel stiff. It'll sound stiff. If it feels stiff, looks stiff, sounds stiff, it is stiff. Um, and, and the other thing is now you're no longer a metronome. Your arm is no longer a metronome, so your time may um, slow down or speed up, okay? So you may start to slow down, you may start to speed up, and that's going to be really frustrating if you're playing with somebody um, and they're trying to keep up with you, because a lot of times when you're doing bluegrass, you don't have a drummer to keep the, the tempo, you know, you don't have a drummer for a metronome. It's usually two guitar players, or a guitar, banjo, mandolin, another guitar, bass. The bass player might be able to keep some time, um, but, you know, there's not going to be a drummer going boom, tick boom tick boom tick boom kind of thing. Generally in bluegrass, that's the case. Country, yeah, sure, but bluegrass, not so much. Okay, so um, so let's go over the pattern, all right? And so it's down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up. We're not changing chords. And 
anytime we do change chords, we want to hit a downstroke, at least if the chords change on the downbeat. So um, in this case, all the chord changes are right on the downbeat. Look at the B section, which is below here, the, sec the, the, the second two lines, where it goes G, G, C, D, G, G, C, G, D, G, C, D, G, G, C, D, G, okay? All of that pattern, I'm just going one and a two, you know, one and, let's see, one, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and one. I'm just going down, 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 down. So there's no syncopation in there. But when we have a whole bar, or in the case of the, the A section, we have two bars of G, two bars of C, and two bars of G, then we can get into this pattern that's... Okay, now we could do the non-syncopated one. like a that, that feels a little choo-choo training to me but I'm fine you, you kind of have to do that when it goes you, you kind of have to do that pa that pattern when you're playing the fast chord changes but when you're doing slow chord changes it's nice to have that little break on beat three so we have one two and and four and down, down, up, up, down, up. See that? I'm missing the strings on beat three. One, two, and three. You may even have to just practice that. One, two, and three. I can tell everybody's practicing. Uh, and then you can add that upstroke. And we can slowly build this pattern. Now, let me show you what it looks like. Mm, let's see. Oh, you know what? I may have, I may have it in our somewhere in here. Let me looky for it. I'm gonna make this all bigger though. I can't see these, they're too small. Clean up, sort. Uh, if, if I did them, they're way down here. Uh, I see scales, lots of scales. Did I do the rhythm and blues? No. Oh, wait. Okay, no. So if I go to um, the Discord site, we'll go to Tom's, let's see if it's there. Tom's Lesson PDFs. Okay, oh, I'm already there. All right, but, oh boy, we got a lot of stuff. How far back? Because remember, I was handwriting stuff. Do you remember that? Chords. Yes, here we go. All right, all right. Let's see, I may have it. Oh, come on, where are you? Oh, dang it. Man, I got everything but that one for crap. Are you kidding me? How did I not end up with that one? Yeah, I'm giving you accent exercises. Boom. Isn't that funny? Literally did wrote out every oh building the folk group. What's this look like? Okay. You're gonna download. And then I'm gonna go to the download folder. You enjoying this? <laughs> My wife is like, why do you talk to yourself so much? Oh, I'm just kidding. Oh, funny. Okay, well, <laughs> this this will work, but <laughs> it's funny. I have all these other grooves, but I don't have. I have good looking versions of, and I'm sure I have I have this somewhere. Uh, where am I? Okay, so I need to do this. Desktop. Boom. Boom. There we go. All right. Back to OBS. Here. <laughs> Old school, baby. Okay, so this is kind of the groove we want to use on those first four or uh, six bars. Down, down, up, up, down, up, and that little smudge there at the under the 
fourth note is, I think it's supposed to be, a, I don't know what that's supposed to be. But is the way you would count that is one, two, and, and four, and. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna, we can clap it, okay? That always helps to get the rhythm in your head so that you, you know the rhythm, okay? So here, here's, it's a fairly slow tempo. One, two, three, four, one, two, and, and four, and. 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 Okay, you do that, you hear that rhythm, and you try to emulate the The hard thing to do, again, is to miss the strings on that down stroke of three. So you're... You don't have to hit every one of those notes, and you can hit extra ones. You could go one and if you want to go. I don't know. That doesn't sound very good. No. Like, if you go one, two, and you can go. You know, you could just hit one. You could let that beat two ring uh, ring out for for three eighth notes. Um, there's a lot of different ways you can do it. Um, from Kathy, I need Tom's guidance to get my strumming started, but once I, uh, I'm i I'm wound up, then off I go. Any suggestions for getting going? Um, yeah. Um, I do have videos on this, so you can look up in my playlist, uh, my strumming. Um, do I have a video where I'm like, you can just practice the strumming pattern? I should do that where I'm just like, like for 10 minutes. <laughs> um, that's actually not a bad idea because a lot of times with students, it's, it is all about that. Um, when I would have one-on-one -on -one students, it would be, they just have to sit there and do it and do it nonstop. And you're right. You get away from it. Um, one thing I would, I would do a, you know, metronome. Okay. So you practice with a metronome. You can download a metronome for free on your, for your phone. Um, and uh, always have one with you. Um, and so if you're playing to a metronome, you can set the metronome to eighth notes if that helps. Uh -huh. Let's see. Oh, I have to, I have to do something. I'm not gonna do it. Um, more work. Let me just get this open though, so I remember to do it when I sign out. Okay, perfect. All right. Um, and uh, and another thing is to kind of go slow. Uh, don't try to go too fast too soon. And I think counting helps. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. It's, it's very, it's like, oh, thank you, Lena. God bless you. Uh, it's kind of like, um, you know, walking down the street, rubbing your belly and patting your head at the same time. Um, you could also count what you're actually playing. One, two, and, and four, and. One, two, and, and four, and. Truth be told, it's probably better just to count one, two, three, four. One, two, sorry. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That's hard. It's hard to do. You can go really slow. One, two, three. Uh, shoot, it is hard. Really hard slow. One, two, three. I'm trying to get that up. Sorry. One, two, three. Reason, um, the reason you want to be able to kind of get those two things happening at once is because Gary will tell you, you know, it's it takes a while to get to that point where you can sing and play at the same time. You just have to stink and do it. And it'll probably be like, you know, you'll be doing whole notes for a while until you can get a groove going because the groove is the rhythm of your melody may be totally different than the rhythm of your groove. I, I remember 
kind of realizing this when um, I had, uh, you know, I was writing music for my band and I was making the bass player play, um, you know, pretty difficult things and make, and I was writing songs that he was singing. He was the lead singer and the bass player. So I would write these really crazy bass parts and then he have to sing over them and he would just have to practice and practice. This poor guy, a band that went nowhere. He just put too much work in, but he can sing and play anything. Now it's like nothing is difficult for him. But when I met him, he was doing like Roxanne and, and police songs and Tom Petty tunes. And he was singing and playing at the same time. Uh, the stuff that we did was a little bit more progressive. Uh, I wouldn't say it was anything like Rush. It was more like the police um, than than Rush, but like later police, not Roxanne police. So, um, oh, nice. Trying, I've got a new guitar invention I'm going to try today. I don't know if it's going to work, but it might. So I won't. I'll, I'll, if it works, I'll show it off. But if it doesn't work, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> um. Hey, Becker's in the house. Yeah, ta 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 pa pa ta. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I, I'm not. I'm not sure. I got to be careful. <laughs> I don't want to say anything <laughs> dirty. Okay. So um, again, it's down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up. I live in. No, that's not it. I, I am a left, no, I am a left, now this, there's got to be some phrase you can say in there, I used to do, what was it, with that I was like, I am a leprechaun, I am a leprechaun, I am a leprechaun, I am a leprechaun, or if you did the extra note, I live in Indiana, I live in Indiana, I live in Indiana, I live in, you know, but, um, Because I know that there, <laughs> you know, the bucket of fish, bucket of fish, which is a drummer, Phil, right? Bucket of fish. Or if somebody tells a joke, bucket of fish. But there's also my favorite, <laughs> my favorite Tom Phil is Pat Boone, Debbie Boone. <laughs> Pat, favorite starting of a song. One, two, Pat Boone, Debbie Boone. Pat Boone. <laughs> so there's got to be, does anybody have one for that pattern? One, two, and, and four, and one, two, and I need to think of something. I'm sure there's guitar teachers have taught them, and I probably had one at one point. I just forgot. Yeah, exactly, uh, Sam. Yeah, and ultimately, you want to be able to, I mean, if you, can, if you can't carry a tune in a bucket, then maybe you're not even going to bother singing. Um... But yeah, the singing and playing at the same time, the the way to make it work is to know the singing part so well and the rhythm, all the elements very well um, individually and then bringing them all together. That's a starting place. Um, and, um, you know, I, I led worship for years. And so I, I, <laughs> I got good at it because I had to feed my family. I mean, it was just, it was like, I was working at this Adventist church on Saturday mornings playing guitar and they paid me 50 bucks to play guitar. And then the worship leader left and they asked me to be the worship leader. And I said, well, uh, what's it pay? <laughs> and they said a hundred dollars. And I went, oh, okay. <laughs> so I'd never led worship before in my life, but I just doubled my salary for the morning. And um, so I, you know, I worked it up and I kept the songs fairly simple. And as I, as we, you know, as the years went on, I did it for years at that one church. I stayed there for years doing that. At one point, I was leading worship at four churches every weekend at the Adventist on Saturday morning. Um, well, I was playing guitar at another church in Pasadena and sometimes leading, not 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 that often. And then I was leading a service at a, a Baptist church on Sunday morning 
and a Presbyterian church Sunday night. So I had all the denominations covered. If I don't get to heaven, <laughs> nobody's getting to heaven. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> the, <laughs> the amount of heresy that comes out of my mouth on an average day is pretty voluminous, volu voluminous or whatever the word is. Oh, one and two and three. Oh, I see. Tapa, 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 tapa. I see. So you're going ta, ta, pa, ta, pa, ta, pa, ta, pa, ta, pa, ta, pa. That last one sounds like potato. P potato. So let's think of something we can say with potato. Uh, let's see. Potato. Uh, I. I bake a potato, I bake a potato, I bake a potato. You could say something like that. And that's the rhythm. Uh, you get the rhythm in your head, but the main goal is to, uh, you know, and the thing that um, Ka Ka uh, Catherine, I think it was, was struggling with is not turning her hand around, okay? Because here's what happens. You got it. And then you go. Oh, so you go. She, what is it? Now, and the next thing you know, if you turn around there, if you go on the up, on the end of three, if you go start with a downstroke, you're going to end up with an upstroke on beat one. So if I go and, if I go and three, see, and four and one, what, that's not right. You need a strong downstroke. One, two. And that's what everybody does. And they turn themselves around and they immediately know it. Like when I'm playing, you know, practicing with students or whatever. Um, and then they go, oh, God, now I'm off. They get off and they're like, they, they immediately know it. Yeah, strumming is, you know, I, I you've heard me say this probably a dozen times, but it's, when people say, what's the most important thing to learn on a guitar? I ask them, well, what do you play, electric or acoustic? And they say, if they say electric, I say, learn your fretboard. Like, learn every note on your fretboard. It'll open up all sorts of stuff. You'll start to see scales and chords and all this stuff. You'll be able to have a language and communicate with others. Because if you're playing electric guitar, chances are you're playing with other musicians. So if you're playing with other musicians, you need to have a language you can speak. And piano players don't like it when you say, yeah, the seventh fret. <laughs> That doesn't do them any good. They're like, yeah, I don't have any frets on my piano here. So what note is it? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> you know, so you need to learn your fretboard. Uh, but if you're playing acoustic guitar, you're oftentimes playing by yourself. And what happens is, and I, and the, the very pattern I'm showing you right now is, is a crutch pattern for so many people. Once you get this pattern down, it's real tempting to use it on every song. And that's wrong. So what I say to the most important thing for acoustic players to learn is as many grooves as possible. Learn a bunch of, make up your own. Um, I, I can pull up, um, do I have Logic open? I don't have Logic. Um, but you know, in Logic, and, and if you have, a, if, you're, if you have Mac products, you know, if you have a MacBook or whatever, um, you have GarageBand and you can pull up GarageBand, set a tempo, you know, 120 or 100 or 80 or whatever. Um, and uh, so I've got, Default 120, no, 70 here. It's set. Okay, so this is like a hip hop thing. I'm gonna turn on my speakers. So I don't want that pattern, but let's let's get rid of this drummer. Let's do a different drummer. I'm just gonna go with kind of a classic uh, rock. Let's see, a retro rock. That's good. Let's change it. All right. So now I change the tempo too. So one. So there's a pattern that drummer just loaded into drums, into, into logic. I didn't program that at all. So you want to listen to the hi-hat? The drummer's right hand should line up with your right hand. Now he's got some, maybe some ghosting in there on the 16th, but basically he's playing an eighth note group. And the kick.
that's a great groove right there. Oops. Uh, here, hold on a second. We could do lessons on this. Um, and I just, I didn't know what drum pattern I was going to get. That's the first one that dropped in. So, and there's a millions, millions, billions of patterns in Logic in the drummer software. And you just, you just use an XY thing and you can change the volume and the complexity just by moving it around. And it, you do make the tiniest of moves and it'll change something. Um, so what I did was, okay, I got the, listen to the hi-hat, basically eighth notes, okay? And then I got the snare hits on two and four, which I'm kind of doing by, we talked about this in the past, but I'm basically muting the strings at the same time that I'm hitting them with my right hand. See, I, all the strings are open and I'm getting that snare sound. But you can also like lift your chord up. See, I, can, I take my chord up here, so I'm not pushing down over here as much. And that gets rid of any other notes potential ringing out. Get a lot of scratch. Yeah, GarageBand works great for this. You can drop a drummer in there. You can create, and so that that's where I get all the grooves. And so then the the accents of where I played chords was basically. last you the whole song but if you do on every single song people are going to get bored listening to you if you do three sets of 10 songs you know you got 30 songs in a set and every single groove is the same dun, 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 you know um you're gonna you're gonna get people are gonna be bored with you okay so let me pull up just to give you another example uh i'm just gonna click on that one was called am gold this one's called long haul i have no idea what this sounds like that's a shuffle. Hitting the hi hat. Four, one, two, three. Opening up that hi hat on beat four. It's kind of cool. So I might want to put something there. Great writing tool. Like I will when I when I wrote uh, ETA. When I wrote ETA, I the first thing I started with was was a hip hop groove. I just put some random hip hop groove in, um, and then did the X Y thing around until it was you know, and then maybe got rid of some of the fills and click off some of the instruments because you can add and subtract instruments. Like it'll have percussion things, it'll have crash cymbals, and I'm like, no, I don't want toms. I just want kick snare hi hat. That's all I want. And then, and then I let that inspire me. I need something to inspire me. A click is just not going to inspire me to come up with a cool groove, but a drummer will. So, uh, let's see. Oh, for bluegrass, yeah. But for bluegrass, I mean, the the most common pattern is the one I'm showing you. Um, and then sometimes maybe variations on that. Um, hold on, I'm getting my windows in order. Dang it, there we go. Um, so. The one I've written there on the bottom there, down, down, up, up, down, up, down. Uh, it can, the great thing about that pattern is it can be used, even though it can be abused, you can make changes to it. Like uh, we did this before when we talked about grooving uh, way back in lesson, I don't know, 50 something, I think. I can't remember. Um, but we took this pattern and we made it sound like a 50s pattern. So John Lennon plays D this way. Um, and so that makes it 50s, but you know, if I do, I could do a snare hit. Kind of campfire sounding. But for bluegrass, it's the same pattern, but just super fast. So like this. Uh, 
but Stormy Pattern, Stormy Group doesn't matter. You both are synonymous. Or synonymous, yeah, that's the word I'm looking for. <laughs> so, oh man, it's already 10 23. So on Friday, we're going to actually get to the plane of this. We're not, we, I just want to talk about more of the rhythm stuff. Um, and I wanted to talk about the fact that we're using two different positions. And I wanted to talk about that we're going to use open strings to transition back and forth in positions. Open strings are a great tool for uh, moving around the fretboard. Um, and uh, this is a micro move. We're moving literally one fret. Okay, we're moving from the second fret to the first fret, keeping in mind the capo, but... We're just thinking we're in the key of G. I just every time I've seen people do Bill Chi, uh, Bill Cheatham, it was in the it was with the capo at the second fret. So, uh, House of the Rising Sun. Uh. I don't forget. I, I forget. I don't even know. I don't know. I get all those old songs mixed up. I used to play trombone and accordion, too. Gave them both up. Yeah, well, that's a good thing. <laughs> it's like a double, that's a double hit of nerd nerdness right there. Trombone and accordion. So I'm assuming you're a computer programmer, like you invented the computer then, <laughs> right? We have you to thank for all of this and, and curse. Yeah, what's our peak here? Uh, let me see. Yeah, we we're just sitting in the thirties. We never. Oh, it says forty one was the peak, but that was that was at like nine forty. I must be. Oh, I got. Oh yeah. All right, Lena. Thank you for the five bucks. That's you just paid for my coffee. I appreciate that. Okay, so. Um, yeah, so if I did, okay, that one was called Long Haul. Let's do Double Live. What does that sound like? Oh, this one's going to be. This is on the rides. See, that one, that one is kind of that, that pattern, the one, two, and, and three, and pattern. Okay. How fast we are streaming. Give me an example of how fast we're streaming. I don't know. You mean strumming? Uh, well, I mean, this song, I'm not sure where we're going to end up. I doubt we're going to go past 150 uh, just as a, as a group. What am I trying to do here? That is what I'm trying to do. Um, but... That's the te that tempo, you know, it's probably. Um, that's probably around 120, I would say. I don't know. What is, what was this? What does 120 sound like? Mm -hmm. No, it was probably 150. Again, there would never be drums in bluegrass. <laughs> it just says it's worth. Here's that. If you can get it down faster than that, mazel's off. Um, good on you. But uh, the for our purposes, you know, this is largely beginners here. I don't think I don't even know if we'll get it up to that fast. But it would be great if you guys could. I mean, ultimately, uh, 
mean, if I'm reading, if I'm reading, I'm not going to be able to play full speed. You, this is, when you get to that level of speed on these bluegrass songs, they have to be memorized. You can't be. Yeah, no, I understand. I mean, I was forced to have to play guitar by family, but not, so I got lucky. <laughs> so, um, and I got yes, one twenty is marching band speed. You know, if I ever want to try to find one twenty, I always go. I always sing. Sorry, I'm just tying my shoe. <laughs> I just thought you wanted to get up and close and personal here. Uh, my shoes went loose. Uh, I always sing da 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 marching band table da 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 one two three four one two three four let's see if I'm right here's one that's one fifty let me go to one twenty I was a little fast I was a little fast because I just think of marching band music as being a little bit faster than it really is but yeah. 120 is marching band speed. Almost every song in marching band. Yeah, you, go, you go too slow and people are falling over. You go too fast and they're running into each other. So you got to really, really be careful with marching band music. <clears throat> yeah, don't do things in like 7 8. <laughs> that would be awesome. Oh, 7 8 is probably fine. It would be alternating between 7 8 and 4 4. That would be bad. So that would be like 15 8. I mean, 15 16. Or no, 15-8. Uh, yeah, that would be 15-8. You know, if you were going to... You know, you, you, they'd be falling all over the place. You get Stars and Stripes Forever. Dah, yep. Exactly. I, if I think that song, I almost always get close to 120. Um, it's like... Yeah. Can, I, can I find an E? Dah, dah. I was... I was Oh, I was on A. I wasn't even close. Jeez. Um, they had past tense. <laughs> well, <coughs> yeah, I want to get a hurdy gurdy, which is kind of like an accordion, definitely. It's an accordion that, yeah, you got it. You crank instead of bellow, um, or pump. Uh, but uh, I the place the place that makes them out here and they're not cheap. I mean, it'd be at least a couple thousand dollars. I'm just not sure if, I don't know what I'd do if I get a composer and ask me to do something on it. Uh, Cause it, they, it's a, the waiting list for it was an, uh, a year and a half for Hurdy Gurdy. Bruce, I'm telling you, they're not that hard. I think you, you, you should try to make a Hurdy Gurdy next. I know you can get plans for them and I know you can get kits and put them together yourself. Um, and those would be our, you could get those and do it. I think Bruce should try to, I think that's the next thing you should try to make. And if you do a good one, if you get a decent one out of it, um, then at that point, um, you go into production because I just don't think there's enough hurdy gurdy makers. And I think it's only going to get more popular. Um, so anytime there's a pirate movie out, <laughs> hurdy gurdy gets, gets called upon. So um, but I, Outlander, let's see, was it Outlander I was watching, I think? Was it Outlander? Yeah, Outlander we were watching, remember we talked about this, it just gets a little too risque. Um, but, uh, I think we watched all the way to the end though. I can't remember. Um, now I can't remember it at all. But I was like, at one point I was like, I think the score is great. And I looked up his Bear McCready and I was like, oh yeah, because Bear has, he has a, in fact, I talked to him about it. He has a um, Hurdy Gurdy and he didn't buy a real expensive one. So it's not like I have to get the $5,000 one with all the bells and whistles. Although I kind of wouldn't mind that. In fact, I was going to get the cheaper one, but I was going to have to put a pickup in it. Because uh, I think it was only $200 extra for a pickup. And that would... That's huge because then you can start running it through all sorts of effects and amps and, you know, make it distorted and come up with some really cool sounds. So that's a must if I'm going to have a hurdy-gurdy, if I'm going to 
um, have one made, I'm going to have a pickup put in it. So, uh, would anybody interested in me doing live, oh, uh, teaching rhythm only as an addition to Tom's lesson? Beck, 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 <laughs> Becker's hawking his wares. That's fine, Becker. You can totally do that. And I've lied to you guys. I actually said I don't teach privately. Well, I've got a student coming over this afternoon or at noon um, to um, take a lesson. So uh, he's he's already a pretty good guitar player. He does like he was doing cruise ship, which obviously that's all gone right now. Uh, but he does like he was a drummer, and then he started realizing that the guitar players were having more fun, and also that they like could be solo and he could sing. So he's like, well, why not? I'll start learning guitar. So years ago, and he was a student of mine like 20 years ago. So he, he, I, he wanted to get together and, and work on some things. And I said, okay, I'll, I don't do it very often because I do have work uh, that I should be concentrating on. Oh, thank you, Mamba. Um, oh, you subscribed to Becker then. Oh, funny. My, your grandfather snapped when I joined a garage band, <laughs> like Bach, Beethoven, hated rock and roll. Yeah, Beth and I were talking about this the other night. No, no, you're fine, Becker. I don't care. That's that's fine. Actually, you're you're giving me added value. Um, so uh, um, yeah, if you do a live stream, or you you know, if you if you guys want to pay, you know, pay back. Or I also told you my nephew, uh, Tony Tibbetts. Let's see, do I have his, he, he's doing live stream lessons, um, and he's in Boston, and he graduated from Berkeley, um, and uh, um, kind of got him started playing guitar, when he was in high school, he started pretty late, and really got into it, it's gotten really good, so uh, he can also, let me see if I can find his. Um, email address, he sent it to me. Uh, did I save it? I don't see it here. Mm. Uh, I don't know. I'm going to ask, uh, I'm going to ask him for his email address. And I'll, I'll give it to you. I thought I asked him this before, and I may have, but I just don't see it in the chat stream. Let's see if he sent it. Nope. All right. Okay. Uh, hey, Gibson, Orville. Good to see you again. So um, let's uh, let's see. Hold on. So. Friday, we're going to play, uh, start working on the melody. And then Monday, we'll see if we can start working on the B section. We Maybe Monday, I'll, I'll push the rhythm, uh, the B section. Uh, so if if, uh, if Becker's going to do rhythm, Becker, also do the rhythm you would do for the second half of the song, which would be just one, two, and three, four, and down, down, up, down, down, up. And uh, practice changing those chords. Practice... And you don't need to even strum to practice changing the chords because you're going to be going. No, I got my capo off, but you're going to be going pretty fast. So G, C, G. Just do one strum of each just to try to get your fingers to 
to start to memorize the paths that they're going to take. See what I'm doing here? See, I'm, like, where does my first finger want to go? There, and then where does my second finger go? Just from here to there. And my third finger goes from here to there. So, and then from this chord, and you can just practice between two chords, get those finger paths down, and then try to put it, try to put it into the song. Um, uh, let's see, what else? Oh, he tolerated the Beach Boys. Oh, uh, there's a mutating COVID variant in California. I think I, 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 I think I had it a couple weeks ago. Um, totally didn't think, didn't realize it, but I, I can't. I don't want to say why now. I think I had it, but um, but I'll later I can say something. Uh, but I'm gonna get the uh, antibody test next month, so um, uh, hopefully I will. Yeah, because you know the funny thing is the case count in California is down to almost nothing compared to where it was like a couple months ago and they haven't opened anything up, but people are just opening anyway. <laughs> so gyms are open, hair salons are open. They're just kind of, you know, the governor said, Oh no, you need to say shut. And everybody's like, yeah, whatever, dude, we're not listening to you anymore. So it's pretty, it's pretty wide open down here in LA, uh, which has been the hotbed of the country really, to be honest. But, um, let's see. Uh, and Orville Gibson is your real name. That's really cool. Yeah, and I've got a new video that's going to drop today at 3 p.m. my time. So 6 o'clock. Sorry, on the in Europe, it's going to be pretty late. Uh, that's just an experiment. Normally, I would drop them around 9 my time, but I'm trying 3 o'clock to see if it does better. And it's uh, digging deeper into the A minor chord. So I'm going to probably go through a bunch of different minor chords at different points. I don't think I'm going to do... Like the next video will be something different. I'll, I'll probably do, uh, I'm not sure. I may do a review of the, oh no, I did the bazooki already. I may do the, I've got, I've got two more things coming. So, um, how, I, I'm not sure what you mean, Sham. How fast we streaming or strumming? I think I did that already. It just depends on how fast the song how fast the song goes. Yeah, Australia and Australia is still locked. You know, they're still throwing people in jail from gathering together. It's like, it's like you know, it, I I saw the 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 um, thing on uh, the um, what's it uh, what's it called um, uh, Johns Hopkins. They said that we should have herd immunity by April, and that's probably in combination with people that have it, people that can't get it, people who have the antibodies. And didn't know they had it and people getting the vaccine. So with the, all those factors, um, herd immunity. Now, whether those factors are safeguards against different st strains, I don't know. But uh, I look at the California numbers and they're way down. Even the L.A. County numbers are way down. So. Um, oh, uh, monetization. Uh, on basically you have to have a thousand, uh, subscribers and I've, I think I've subscribed to yours, Lena and to yours, uh, I know Gary's and also, uh, to, uh, Becker's I've subscribed. So you try to get up to that thousand. That's the hard one. The 10,000 hours, not necessarily that hard. If you do some live streaming, like if you live stream for two hours and you have 10 people, there's 20 hours right there. Um, if I, you know, I do two hours, three times a week, and then I typically have 30 to 40 people. So, so you, it's multiplied by the people. So if you have 50 people watching you for two hours, that's a hundred hours right there. And, um, and I, but I, I get, I get, so you need 10,000 hours. I get 10,000 hours. Oh, wait, no, I get, so 10,000. Yeah. 10,000 hours or 10,000 minutes. Now I don't remember. How much time do I get? Oh, I lost a subscriber. That's weird. Okay. I had 90,319 or 20. Now I have 19. Okay. Um, analytics. Okay. These are just views. So I don't know what that translates to. 
watch time hours um, in the last this week I've had uh, 957 hours this week so yeah I get about a thousand hours a week oh wait so far this week I get about three three thousand hours a week of watching so that means every three weeks I'm hitting that 10,000 mark of in time so that's but I've got a lot of subscribers and I have a video that's really heavily promoted um, So we'll see. I, hopefully, my digging deeper into A chord, those other, the digging deeper into the A, B, or the A, this, I did the cage method chord, C, G, uh, so I did C, G, D, A, and E. The digging deeper into all of those, they all, uh, you know, in the two to 3,000 views, which isn't great, but hey, they can build on that. And hopefully this one will help promote those. Um, and if this one gets a good showing, then the other ones will increase. Um, you just never know. It's like catching, catching lightning in a bottle. I should do more open tuning ones. I got to come up with a concept for an open tuning because a lot of people like the open tuning ones. So um, um, I should just do like a fun with dadgad thing and, and, and just do some observ you know, observations with dadgad. Uh, I, I might play most any song in dadgad was very popular, really popular. Um, and so I might, you know, I might do something in that vein soon. Um, but yeah, so I, wait, I'll take, I'm going to sign off. If you uh, go over to Be Becker live, uh, you might be able to see him do live or he teaches privately too. So you can get a private lesson with him. I don't have a problem with that. Let's see. Did... Oh, okay. Yeah, Tony, I don't want to put Tony's phone number up here, but he, if he has a special email address, I, I'd be happy to give him that give that one out. I may have actually given that out in uh, the uh, Discord, but I'd like to have it current. So, all right. Uh, let's see, anything else I need to know? I know, it's, it's, it's a stream museum. I need more places to hang them. Um, I don't want to have too many things hanging on the wall, especially acoustic instruments, because they tend to ring when I'm recording. Or playing music, I hear, you know, in fact, I had this out to, today because I was writing, you know, yesterday because I was writing pop music. And this thing is actually um, here. Uh, this is one of those heavy metal mute things you put on the headstock or the neck so you can do the tapping stuff. Uh, but I was capoed at the fifth fret and I was hitting short chords, stabby chords, and the strings were ringing out and it was bugging me. I could hear it through the microphone. So I went ahead and put this on and it got rid of the, the strum, the rings. I don't know if you can hear them, but if I capo at the uh, fifth fret, you can hear all those notes. So what I do is I just put this thing on and it works great. Just go like this, run it through, like that, nothing. So that way I can I can capo and close mic and not have to worry about uh, sympathetic strings ringing out. It's not I'm not trying to play sitar. On uh, sitar you want that, but on acoustic guitar generally no. So that's kind of a cool trick. But uh, yeah, Bruce, did you answer my? Did you talk about that at all when I said start making uh, hurdy gurdies? Uh, that was a while ago I said that. Yeah, I still don't know what Shams want me to do. Oh, please, yeah. How fast we're streaming? I'm not sure what you're asking. Oh, how long have I been streaming? This? Oh, well, it's almost a, coming up on a year for this since we've been, uh, since I've been doing the COVID lessons. It started. Um, yeah, Becker, no problem. Just give me a percentage, okay? Uh, let's see. <laughs> When I did that TV show with, uh, with what's his name, uh, it was for uh, Ugly Betty, and it was uh, the 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 leader, uh, the guy from Kiss, the leader from Kiss. Um, uh, what's his name? Oh gosh, I can't think of his name. I know you're saying it. 
Oh, okay. Cutting the parts, you really need a CNC machine to produce quality. Okay. Okay, Bruce. So we need to donate to Bruce to get a CNC machine. <laughs> How much is a CNC machine? Ah, uh, yes. Uh, well, kind of running them all over the place, but the, yeah, these are pretty small ones. You so say you probably need something. Here's a smart one. Uh, desktop one. I say have twenty-one thousand to four thousand. This one, if this is what you need. A CNC router for advertising woodworking. Yeah. So something like this, and then so what you do is you program it, and then it it does all the cutting for you. You have to make sure everything is in the right place at the right moment. It's cool. Yeah, I've seen those before. Um, so we have to get we have to get Bruce a CNC machine. Um, so yeah, four thousand dollars for a CNC machine. It's not too bad. Of course, you're probably going to have to spend another four thousand on different bits for different types of cuts. Um, because you, if you made a herd of gurdy, you could probably sell them for two to five thousand dollars, or two to four thousand dollars. So you could probably pay for it within five herd of gurdies. Um, oh, rubber grommets. Yeah, that would. Yeah, that totally would work. I. Yeah. Well, you see, I have. <laughs> I have the foam underneath mine you know it's just yeah it, it kind of drives me crazy um at least i can still hear it it's pretty high up there but i can still hear it oh paul uh not paul stanley uh, gene simmons thank you it is gene simmons so gene simmons when <laughs> people wanted to get their picture with him he said three dollars <laughs> it cracked me up i was like who has three ones on him you know it's like five i could see five or ten or twenty or whatever but he was joking but it was pretty funny um anyway he was a nice guy yeah, GoFundMe. There you go. We do GoFundMe. I'll, I'll put some money in there. I am a humble person, always helping nature with a sign as a good sign of a good person. Yeah, you should see me when the camera's off, though, man. I am a jerk. Oh. <sighs> so, um, all right. Listen, I will uh, let you go. Um, you can go check out Becker. He's going to do some work with you, I think, online. Maybe. I don't know. Am I, am I wrong there, Becker? Um but uh, maybe get you up and strumming on this uh, basic pattern that I call the standard folk groove, but it can be used in a lot of different tempos, a lot of different ways, uh, in a lot of different styles, but it should not be the only one you play. Uh, like I said, you, if you're primarily an acoustic guitar player, you definitely want to be able to play lots of different styles and lots of different grooves. That's the thing. You're going to bore your audience if every song has the same feel. All right? Okay. <laughs> yeah, well, whatever. Uh, you're not making money yet, no, Becker, because you only you're only about 500 subscribers. So you'll you'll get there. You'll get there. Just keep hammering away. Um, uh, you know it, it, what what's going to happen is, you, and I, you can go to different forums and make sure that in your signature is your YouTube channel, and if you make some good comments in forums. Uh, you know, whether they're guitar, you know, acoustic guitar forums, electric guitar forums, whatever forums on, you know, music related, um, people will click on your link and they may subscribe. It's, a, it's one way or really for me, it's been, a, you know, a couple, I think there's a couple times where people promoted my channel. I mean, when I hit the thousand, it was because somebody promoted my channel on, um, on Reddit and I went from 800 to 1200 in one afternoon. Um, and I was, I, I remember I was stuck with food poisoning in Houston, Texas when it happened. So I'm sitting in the, in the, in the lounge at the United lounge, uh, in Texas in Houston and, uh, recovering from food, <laughs> for food poisoning that I got in Texas and, uh, not getting on a plane. Cause I didn't want to freak anybody out because at the time Ebola was a big thing and, and people were throwing up on planes and they were landing planes in the middle of nowhere just cause somebody threw up. Um, and so, and then quarantining everybody, it's like, oh no, no, I wasn't going to do, I said, no, I'm not going to do that. Um, yep. I'll see you on Friday, Izzy or Mamba, um, Jim Horse. Yep. See y'all on Friday. 
So, uh, yeah, so you never know what's going to be the source of your channel taking off. Um, but keep making videos, and one of them will click. Like I said, I got a new one hitting at 3 today, so let me know what you think. Um, I, uh, I, I, think it's, I think it's a pretty good one. I think it's a pretty good one. We'll see. Hopefully I don't... Uh, let me check and make sure I don't have any copyright infringement issues because I did play a little, a little bit of some songs. I've scheduled monetization on. Okay, so they're not hearing anything. I got three strikes recently, and I pulled down two videos that were my songs I wrote and performed, but I'd forgotten that I'd let a library company use them for library. And I make a little bit of money from them that, through that library, but I was really trying to help a friend out. And it kind of sucks that I can't upload, I can't play those songs on YouTube. And then another one was because I played the song that uh, the uh, uh, Take Me Down, or I say down to, the, down to the Valley to Play did with Sadie, and that's fine. I'm just doing a share royalty thing. Uh, that was here. It's on the live stream. Yeah, sharing. So that's fine. I don't mind that. Money's still making money. So what are we looking at with views on these? You know, it's, it's funny. I was getting more views months ago. So I think people are starting to get back to work. Like I haven't hit a thousand um, on any. So the last time I hit a thousand was less than 157. That was the last time I hit a thousand views on any of my live streams. We're averaging in the four and 500, maybe 600 was intro to 176. No rhyme or reason to it. Um, but it's a little bit, uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of an indicator that I think people are starting to get back to work. Right. So anyway, I will talk to you all later. Thank you for the super chat there, Lena. I appreciate it. Um, and then, uh, Friday will, Lord willing, if I'm alive and with you all, we'll, we'll start working on the melody for Bill Cheatham. Okay. All right. God bless you guys. Thank you so much. YouTube, YouTube, Joseph. Oh, yeah. I, I just put that foam on.